Good afternoon, everyone. So today I'm gonna to be talking about my Atemoya Cherimoya tree. Um, so really quick, just a quick general overview. Um, there are, I guess you could say three, um, I don't call them varieties, but three different plants that resemble themselves, uh, not including the soursop. So for example, you have the sugar apple, you have the cherimoya, and then you have the atemoya. So just based on those three different fruits, you do have different varieties. For example, of cherimoya, you have three. You have more than sorry. You have more varieties of the atemoya, and you have a lot of different varieties of the sugar apple. But one way that um, I can tell the difference between my cherimoya and the atemoya is that if you look at the cherimoya leaves, I mean, it tends to be a bit more round. Um, I guess how it looks but when you look at it from the outside at the atemoya leaves all these are atemoyas right here um, the leaves tend to be more like blades they're a bit longer and pointier um, so in terms of the cherimoya and um, atemoya and sugar apple they all sort of look the same this is still pretty small you know it came by itself but the atemoya is actually a hybrid or a mix between a cherimoya plant and a sugar apple when i first bought my my plant my atemoya cherimoya plant it actually had two main trunks this one over here that I chopped up and this one but since it opened up like a V uh, I didn't quite like it but when I first bought it I was like oh perfect two plants in one and this was before I knew how to graft so I bought that but I didn't like how it was just opening up too much at the bottom so what I did I cut the cherimoya um, I guess graft off and I started grafting um, onto my atemoya plant so now this side is sort of like cherimoya and then this side i have it as an atemoya but what i did on this side i also grafted cherimoya just so i can have mixed varieties and once again you can tell by the leaves it's a bit more rounder whereas the atemoya tends to be more like a blade so different people like different fruits uh, but there is a slight you know difference in terms of flavor or taste and texture uh so yeah so you got the sugar apple cherimoya and the atemoya so, so some of the people i've spoken to uh friends family uh, you name it um they tend to have you know i don't want to say bad luck but you know no luck on getting fruit on their cherimoya and the reason for that is if you have a small tree there may, there may not be a lot of flowers on it um, to sort of get you know fruit on it but the main reason why some people say that their cherimoya uh, plant doesn't give fruit is because if we look at so if you look at this flower right here you can see that it's barely open um, or it's not completely open same thing with this one right here you see how it's not completely open or it's barely open that is a female flower uh, or yeah a female flower but since it's so small or the opening is so small that sometimes bugs insects you know you name it uh have a difficult time coming in here to pollinate it uh, because once it opens up a bit more uh, let's call it like this one right here once it opens up a bit more like this one or even more the flower becomes male so that's easier to get to but 
the flower that needs to be pollinated is the female one. So a lot of people do is, all right, so this is just an example. So they grab like a little cap or just something small to collect the pollen and they'll find the male flowers and they'll sort of use a paintbrush uh, and you can find them online. This is just a regular paintbrush, but there are specialty brushes that are, you know, have fine or very delicate um, bristles. I don't know what they're called. Um, that way it doesn't damage the cherimoya. So they'll go into a, uh, into a male plant. So this is just an example right here. Uh, let's say that, you know, this is the male plant. They just go in there. You know, they tap it or they hit it or use the brush to sort of collect the pollen. Um, and then what they do, and you'll see, uh, if you look into like different videos on how to pollinate, you know, cherimoya, temoya um, plants, um, you'll see that they use the, the brush, get the pollen, and then, you know, once they, for example, they dip it into the little container where they're collecting the pollen all they do is you know well it's kind of hard with one hand but you get the picture they'll insert there we go they'll insert the brush they'll insert the brush inside and twirl it or you know that way the pollen that they have on the bristles or the brush make contact with the female parts of the flower and then, uh, this is something I, you know, I got from a vid another video or watching different uh, people on YouTube. They just cut a little, I guess, leg, I don't know what it's called, petal from the flower so that, you know, a week from now or a couple days from now, when you go back to hand pollinate your, your tree or your flowers, you know that, oh, hey, I already pollinated this a week ago 10 days ago you know whatever you choose to do so i did i did try that um cross uh, sorry not cross pollinating pollinating by hand and i did get a lot a lot of cherimoyas and atemoyas so it does work uh, but keep in mind that the more fruit you have on it the, you know that's the more nutrients that the tree is using towards maturing the fruit um, and of course if you pollinate flowers that are like at the edge it will get heavy it will bring your branches down um so a lot of people tend to pollinate you know the ones that are closer to the trunk or that aren't you know too far because anything in the edge you know of course it's gonna the weight's gonna make it you know sag or you know drag down um and then lastly, the last thing I just want to cover is, it's my understanding that every part of this plant is poisonous, um, except the flesh. So, hold on, let me just use this as an example. So this is not ripe, I mean it just grew by itself. Uh, let me cut it open real quick. Alright, so I don't have a knife, so I'm just going to butcher this real quick. Um, just so I can show you something. So of course it's not ripe there we go all right so my understanding is that every part of this plant is poisonous uh, or has some sort of toxic or something that's not good for you um, so if you eat the seeds you know you end up swallowing them there's a good chance you could die um, I just want to come out So here we go. So if you eat the seeds, you know, on accident or something like that, there's a good chance, you know, you'll poison yourself or you could die. Uh, the only part, you know, that you should be eating is just the flesh or the skin, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that's it. So when you are eating them, you know, because a lot of stores, um, they don't have signs that says, hey, by the way, don't eat the seeds. If you eat the seeds, you will die. You know, they don't tell you that. They just say for sale, five, six, seven dollars, whatever. And that's it. So just something to keep a heads up on. Um, and that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, other than that, hopefully, you know, this little 
I guess, intro on my cherimoya, temoya plant was of some value. Thanks, everyone.